Live from the JSA Podcast Studio, presenting Data Movers, showcasing the leaders behind the headlines in the telecom and data center infrastructure industry. Welcome, everybody, to our podcast series, Data Movers. I'm your host, Jamie Scott Okataya, founder and CEO of JSA. And alongside me today, my fabulous co host, top B2B social influencer, Mr. Evan Christel. Hey, Evan. Hey. Hey, Jamie. Hey, everyone. Uh, and welcome to Data Movers, where we sit down with the most influential men and women of today's leading telco and data center world, supporting the network infrastructure requirements of this new modern world. Jamie, how are you? Great, great. It's, uh, it's a fabulous day here in Southern California. And we just every day is a place. fabulous day in Southern California. Come on, yeah. you're, you're, you're living in paradise. But um. We have a great guest uh, in the cybersecurity space on today. I'm really keen to speak with them. But before that, you're, you're a bit of a cybersecurity guru yourself. What do you do to protect yourself and your network at home? Any tips or tricks? Yeah. <laughs> um. <laughs> All right. We are like 99% uh, of Americans, basically. Uh, yeah. uh, it's, it's so I'm, I'm a, I know. It is very sad. And... Um, that, that's part of the problem we're facing. I have a couple of tips and tricks I'll share just for, for, for folks. One is, uh, personally, it's all two-factor authentication, yes. multi-factor authentication all the time, like on every account, every service, every device. It's a pain. And, and even, you know, uh, you know, authenticating with your mobile number really isn't that safe anymore unless you have that locked down. So that's what I, I recommend on. Uh, doing right away. And also, I don't click on anything. What about you? Like uh, links and text messages? Do, do, you, do you click to open like weird files that people send you? No, no, no. And I don't even answer uh, calls. I don't know. <laughs> like I, I'm in total lockdown. I don't I don't want to answer. I don't want to hear from it. I don't want to link. I don't want to click. Um, awesome. Well, yeah. that's 90% of the hassle uh, yeah. or, or the challenge for individuals. But let, let's get on with our guests because they have a lot more interesting strategies and initiatives than that. Yes, for sure, for sure. And I am so thrilled, so excited. Of course, as you know, here at Data Movers, we like to really just dive into our guests' background stories, their careers, their highs and lows, their unique perspectives on the future of our industry. And so we are so excited today to welcome Andy Fisher, CEO and founder of Myriad 360, as well as the company's head of marketing, Kevin Ford, on the topic of customer experience best practices. Welcome, Andy and Kevin. Thank you so much. It's great to uh, great to be here. Yeah, good to hear you. Good to see you. And Andy, let's start with you. Uh, an introduction is in order. Tell us a bit about yourself and the company you founded, Myriad Three Hundred and Sixty. Sure. And I'll start by saying, you know, don't forget that password keeper. You want to have a unique uh, login and password to every website that uh, that you use. I do. It's one, two, three, four, five, six. It's it's so unique you're, to me. You're you're ahead of everyone. <laughs> Well, it's, uh, it's, it's great to be here with you today. Thank you so much for having us on. Uh, my name is Andy Fisher, founder and CEO of Miri360. Uh, I graduated from Yale in 2000, which is uh, now about two decades ago. I spent a couple of years uh, in strategy consulting, and, uh, and I started Miri at the beginning of 2003. Um, it was an interesting time. It was just after the dot-com bubble burst, uh, and there was a sea of used equipment floating around and trading hands on eBay and other, other platforms. And, and Myriad really started as a used technology reseller um, way back then. And, and now we've got you know, part, direct partnerships with every major manufacturer and, and software provider uh, out there, more than 200 in total. So we've come a long way from the, uh, the early days in, in 2003. Uh, today, Myriad 360 offers uh, advisory services, systems integration, warehousing, global logistics, and hands-on in the field support for data center migrations, cloud networking, and cybersecurity uh, solutions across the globe. Um, in short, uh, we, we help our clients, uh, well, we advise our clients on technology and we help them implement and optimize it. Um, our clients, our ideal clients have dozens or hundreds of global offices, facilities, and points of presence, a minimum of $10 million of uh, technology budget, uh, many of them with significantly more than that. Um, and we are fortunate enough to work with some of the most technically savvy and innovative companies in the world, many of which are our household names, folks that you've uh, certainly interacted with and, and, and heard of. Uh, but really, uh, when I think about it from the 50,000 foot view, our job is simple. We, we need to save our clients time. We need to save them money. We need to reduce risk. And we need to reduce anxiety 
uh, among the, the very busy and stressed people that, uh, that we work with every day. Oh, I love that. I love that. And, and that is definitely um, uh, something that's at the core, I would say that your core DNA of Myriad, uh, um, that customer um, uh, centric uh, support and, and love delight that you provide. Um, so Kevin, can you introduce yourself as well and what drew you to Marriott 360? Sure, and thanks again for having us on. Uh, happy to be here. So my name is Kevin Ford. I lead marketing and partner development here at Myriad 360. What drew me to Myriad? Um, so I've been at Myriad seven years now. I found out about the opportunity from a friend. Uh, right after starting, I could see the company was very forward thinking, transparent, really cared about its employees and customers. So definitely say culture and atmosphere. Uh, also, we have a diverse customer base uh, portfolio of solutions. So for me and being focused on our marketing, this you know, definitely always keeps things fresh, interesting. I'm always taking on new projects and meeting with new, new people, so. Awesome, well, good, good to meet you. So Myriad 360 is known for having a client or customer first mentality in the company, but but frankly, everyone is saying that these days. And how do you actually walk the walk and not just talk the talk of customer centricity? Yeah, that's a, that's a really good question. Um, the, the very first thing, even before we start down the path of, of customer centricity, um, the first thing that we're very intentional about is who we work with in the first place. Uh, so I've always said that we need to select our next uh, five clients as carefully and intentionally as we select our next five employees. It is that important? Um, I can't overstate uh, how important, as, as is true with any long-term relationship, that you select the right partner. Um, and that goes both ways. Um, and so, you know, once we've, once we've found uh, a client that you know, has similar core values, similar goals, works at a similar speed, um, and who's a really good fit for the things that we're really good at, you know, then we go deep around the discovery phase. And so we endeavor to know our customers, you know, in many cases better than they know themselves, or we try to know them better than they know themselves. And, you know, you've been hearing about the great resignation or the great migration for some time now. And, and with all that turnover um, occurring within our clients' technology teams, you know, we've got a, an opportunity to be a crucial point of continuity in a world of increasing discontinuity. So that's a big piece of it. Um, in addition, you know, we endeavor to be the most flexible partner that our clients have. At our size, which is 110 employees plus 40 to 50 contractors, uh, we have the ability to be far more nimble uh, than a lot of uh, folks that we come up against in the, in the field. And we've got to leverage that as a, as a key differentiator. Um, it's something that our clients really appreciate as they're trying to drive greater operational flexibility into their businesses um, and deal with increasing um, uncertainty in their marketplaces. Uh, and then when you combine you know, deep customer knowledge with, with flexibility, what you've achieved is what's called customer intimacy. And here's what Harvard Business School has to say about customer intimacy. Um, quote, customer, uh, companies that excel in customer intimacy combine detailed customer knowledge with operational flexibility so they can respond quickly to almost any need from customizing a product to fulfilling special requests. And as a consequence, these companies engender tremendous customer loyalty. And that's really what we're trying to do. Um, we, we want to be seen as critical members of our clients' teams. That's why we live in Slack with them, Microsoft Teams with them. Uh, we work where they work to ensure that we are truly the easy button for them. Uh, and then finally, um, you know, that for all of us, time is our most valuable resource. And so we've got to create value in inter every interaction, and we've got to give them a very favorable return on the time that they spend with us. So those are the things that we really focus on that we teach and preach internally uh, to try and ensure that, that we are not just talking the talk, but very much walking the walk when it comes to uh, customer experience. Gosh, I just love that you are you are singing to my heart. I I am such a big um, believer in that in that business philosophy, and and I do I see it um, uh, with with your Myriad team as well. And guys, can you share any examples of how knowing your client better has really translated into additional business? Any case studies, perhaps? Sure, sure. Thank you, uh, Jamie. So. We have an established security practice, uh, as Andy mentioned, with both pre and post sale architects. They help with all different types of security services, ranging from discovery assessments, hands on workshops, vendor brokerage, and procurement support, all the way through deployment. 
I think, a great story that highlights our security capabilities and focus on understanding our customers really well. And, you know, as Andy mentioned before, you know, getting on that level of customer intimacy with them is um, work that we did with a global service provider headquartered in New York. Myriad 360 was engaged to assist with the deployment of an XDR solution, um, really complex environment, over 20,000 devices, locations all over the globe with no central asset management system or administrative platform. Uh, every business unit had their own way of doing things, and this really impacted their response plan. They were flooded with support tickets, their failure rates were really high, and the issues were ultimately impacting their customers and creating delays for them. So the work was initially forecasted as developing workflows and installation packages for all of their corporate systems in scope. And uh, in a short amount of time, uh, through our discovery work with them, we noticed numerous issues uh, with their plans, and we worked with them to redefine the engagement into a more open customer facing effort. Um, as part of this, we developed formal PM controls, including communication plans, a RACI matrix and FAQs. Uh, and this really helped to create an environment that showed all the stakeholders, we heard their concerns, uh, we were committed to providing, uh, and we were committed to providing quality deliverable. So uh, within just a few months, we were working with all of their business unit locations, uh, including all leadership, ID, IT departments, uh, as well as uh, their international stakeholders to really better understand their existing workflows. The solution was uh, that we ended with was a centrally governed tool, uh, a single security dashboard. Uh, we showed the customer that the adoption of this platform did not need to be as disruptive uh, as they thought it was going to be and could really help them with enforcing global policy uh, and get the granularity that they needed to have a strong security response plan around campuses and silos. So uh, after that, we, you know, we scoped out, we had the, uh, we determined what the solution was, we followed through and we went and helped them to launch POCs to prove their solution could overcome all of their company's concerns. Uh, all this effort was run in coordination with our internal project management team, our technical teams, uh, really making sure that the customer had all the necessary documentation that was needed for the response plan along the way. And the project deployed successfully. We're now engaged with the customer. You know, We're helping them to track and report on the ROI uh, and have really become an extension of their team, helping them to make improvements to their security stack. So hopefully that, uh, you know, did a good job at covering, um, you know, how we were able to provide value around our security services from with this customer end to end. That is amazing. Uh, anything, Andy, you you may want to add in there, or I mean, yeah, I mean, just just to add, that was a, a very large, multifaceted project that ultimately, you know, took took different turns over the you know over the course of the engagement, um, and that's just part of the flexibility that that we we you know that we bring to the table. Um, what was ultimately delivered um, at customer request was significantly di different what, from what was originally scoped. Um, but ultimately, um, you know, we we came in on budget and uh, uh, and on track time wise, uh, and that's really what matters. I mean, it's all about delivering a, a great experience on the long along the way to a great outcome. Uh, but things that we look at, you know, as as I sort of take the, the you know the um, the high level view of of kind of how we're doing out there. You know, certainly we look at Net Promoter Score. Uh, we look at the percentage of clients that come back on a rolling three months, uh, three month basis. So we work with pretty large accounts, and if they don't spend money with us for three months, we know something is wrong. Uh, and and so we we go after that pretty quickly to understand, um, uh, you know, what what may have taken place, whether there's a changing of the guard or uh, or whether we dropped the ball somewhere. And I, you know, I I personally take. Um, uh, take a lot of ownership uh, over making sure that uh, our clients are happy and understanding if they're not what we need to do to get get them in the right place. Um, we look at client referrals, and particularly, I mentioned earlier the great migration. You know, when when you know when when a, a decision maker leaves, 
do they take us with them to their new company? And, and more often than not, uh, you know, it takes them, you know, six or six or nine months to get it in place. And, and then they say, hey, I'm ready to start, you know, getting the band back together, which is always a, a resounding, uh, you know, positive uh, review for us when, when somebody takes us along to their new company. And then finally, um, I look very closely at retention rate uh, and growth of our own employees because they are the most important drivers of customer success. Um, and I'll, I'll mention it later. Um, but, but I think that, you know, having very low turnover is really important because there's so much uh, tribal knowledge that gets built up over time. And, you know, despite every effort to document things, um, when you lose somebody, you, you do lose a, a, a big chunk of, of knowledge and um, an important, you know, piece of the connective tissue between our, uh, ourselves and our clients. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. And with this age of resignation upon us, you know, it's so it's it's a core differentiator now too. When you have a team that that stands by you through thick and thin, uh, there's something there's something magical about your your culture, your your what you're what you're doing there at Myriad. And it seems so straightforward. I mean, business is pretty simple at a high level. Uh, you know, the partnerships, the 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 meaningful relationships you're building with clients equate to more business opportunity. And yet, when I, I look around the landscape, uh, there's just so much hype, you, you know, where uh, vendor hype and uh, uh, marketing hype, you know, why don't we see more of this sort of traditional approach to partnering out there in the industry, do you think? Uh, I, th- I think a couple things. I mean, number one, it's it's just really expensive, right? It's expensive mm-hmm. to take the time to to do the necessary discovery work uh, to bring relevant and valuable recommendations to your clients. And so, you know, it's been an interesting process for us. Um, if you look at the trailing 12 months, um, we've served uh, about 300 unique accounts, uh, customer accounts. And if you looked at that same data point five years ago, it would have been more like 600. And so um, we've been going through this very intentional process of, of parting ways with accounts that are not a good fit for us and doubling down on ones that are. And that's a really scary thing to do, um, especially when you think about the sales team in the field. You know, you're telling them, hey, you sold to 45 accounts last year. I want you to sell to 30 accounts this year. Um, that's a really scary proposition. But, you know, I believe really strongly in quality over quantity. Um, and, you know, a, a smaller number of very high quality relationships um, with the right accounts is going to deliver a lot more success um, and happy clients than, you know, than, than trying to spread yourself too thin. And so um, we've done some of the hard things, some of the counterintuitive things uh, there. Um, we limit the number of accounts that, uh, that, a, 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 that an account executive can, uh, can support. Uh, and um, we, we really try to over-index on that discovery process and, and really building both uh, the, the business knowledge um, the technical knowledge and the, the the understanding of you know perhaps there's you know the politics and people that uh, that drive our clients we need to understand how how all that works and we're actually um, we've, we're developing a uh, a new sort of we're, we're codifying all of that into a new methodology um, called the 360 degree uh, view of me um, and and that's really going to bring together all of the work that we've been um, that we've been doing over the years to to try and uh, understand exactly what clients need as part of our uh, drive towards customer intimacy. So really excited um, that we're developing this new tool and assessment and um, and codifying a lot of the of what we've learned over the years in terms of how to gather that information, um, read it back, and make sure that we're approaching things in a in a really um, customized way. Oh, I love that! I love that! Ooh, can't wait to to learn more there. Um, so, you know, looking, looking forward, um, what advice do you have for other entrepreneurs like yourself and other organizations out there who really have an interest in doubling down on, on customer focus? Like, like Evan was saying, it's just so rare in the marketplace. So uh, how can other companies emulate your success? I would say, uh, I would say two things. Um, one is, you know, figure out how to build flexibility into the DNA of the organization um, without breaking all the systems that you've worked so hard to build efficiency into your business, right? And that's the hard thing because flexibility sometimes feels diametrically opposed to running your business efficiently. And so how can you build that, you know, into the, the processes and, and systems? Uh, because I think, you know, more and more as we look forward, clients are going to value that agility and flexibility, which in turn allows them to have greater agility and operational flexibility. 
Um, and then the second thing is, you know, be really honest with yourself about your strengths and weaknesses uh, and focus solely on acquiring customers that will appreciate what you're good at um, and also whose core values align with yours because fit is everything. Oh, Amazing. I'm going to go off script a little bit, Andy, because I was looking at your LinkedIn bio as we chatted. Uh -oh. And uh -oh. <laughs> um, you're, you're a member of a couple of really interesting boards. And, yes. and I'd love just to hear a little bit more of Theater Works USA, which yep. sounds fascinating, and LIDA, Leadership Enterprise for Diverse America. What are those all about? Yeah. So I'll give you the elevator pitch for both. Um, okay. So Theater, Theater Works is an amazing organization that's been around for a number of decades. And, uh, and we bring um, educational, uh, almost Broadway quality theater to, uh, to um, underserved, uh, uh, underserved communities across the country. We do free summer theater in New York. And we believe that, um, you know, getting folks away from screens, as I'm talking into a screen, uh, getting folks, so kids, especially kids away from screens and seeing uh, live productions, there's just nothing like it. And if you can spark uh, curiosity and if you can spark excitement, um, then more people will experiment with theater, more people will go to theater, and that is a good thing for everybody. Um, so that's TheaterWorks. Uh, Lita um, is uh, at its core, a, uh, the, the, the flagship offering within Lita is a, a college access program where we bring 100 scholars, again, from um, under, uh, underserved public high schools across the country, uh, and we endeavor to get at least one student from every state uh, together, uh, they, they do a seven-week program um, on the campus of Princeton University every summer, which is actually happening right now as we speak. Mm -hmm. um, and we give them uh, leadership education. We help them uh, with standardized test prep, uh, with essay writing, uh, and they spend a lot of great time together um, getting to know one another, and they form these amazing bonds. And, you know, essentially, we, we help them get into top-tier colleges because, again, we believe that if we can take somebody from an under-resourced public high school um, in a you know in a, in a very rural part of Arkansas, and we get them into a top college, they spend four years there, uh, get a great education. Their whole community realizes this is possible, um, and uh, and they're they're able to you know sort of get it get out of that you know generational um, uh, you know w wealth challenge that uh, that that we are seeing more and more in the country. So. Um, doing doing amazing work there and, and very proud of both of those organizations and, and very happy to be working closely with them. Wow, fantastic. That, that's so, so inspiring. Thanks for sharing. Oh sure. Gosh. Just love that. Just love that. And, and that leads us into our really kind of fun, rapid fire question section where we just uh, ask a quick question and you just answer first thing that comes to mind. So uh, I'll get started here. What is an upcoming purchase you're thinking about? Uh, and um, Kevin, I'll start with you. Weed Whacker. Oh, interesting. Uh, I had her uh, thought how you come up with that one. <laughs> now are, you, are you going gas, electric, or what, what's, go, what's oh. the deal? You know, it's a good question. Um, I, I'm looking into gas and electric. I'm not sure. Uh, right. Hybrid. Okay, we're going to get a hybrid weed whacker. The Tesla <laughs> the, of weed whackers. The, Fantastic. Exactly. Uh, I uh, am uh, looking to make an investment in an outdoor sofa. Uh, we moved to a new house last spring and still haven't gotten our backyard fully uh, fully outfitted for the summer. Yeah. Oh, I need one of those. So let, let me know what you discover because it's hard to you buy bet. anything now, it, especially with uh, the supply chain. Next question. You guys are in you know the New York metro area, the center of the food universe. What your what a favorite foods that would surprise us? Ooh. I don't think it's very surprising, but I love a good cheeseburger. I'm gonna go with cheeseburger. Oh, that, that is so disappointing. To, I mean, <laughs> and he went from that's... weed whacker, which is like, oh, <laughs> it's, it's setting the level high to cheeseburger. <laughs> not surprised. Not surprised. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, I mean, I, I like a lot of the. I, I'd love a good cheeseburger. Uh, probably will have one this weekend, but I will say. Uh, any tin of sardines uh, and a and a loaf uh, a, and a and a French baguette would make me very very happy. Oh, that's a good one. My, my father's ninety one. He's had a can of sardines every day uh, for breakfast. Got those omega threes. So, yeah, there's something in there that's that's yeah. working. Yeah, I always pull them out of my salad, but now I'm maybe more inclined. To <laughs> those might be anchovies, and I do not like anchovies at all. So make sure you don't mix those up. Oh. But it's the can thing, right? You like wheel back the can and they're all lying yeah. there? Yeah. <laughs> they're lying there. You flip them onto a plate. 
Ah, it's, it's magic. I, I'm going to try it. I'm going to keep my, my mind open. Jamie's a, a sushi kind of gal, you know. I it's got to be sushi. Yeah. I've moved from a place because they didn't have access to good sushi. Like, <laughs> oh, that's <laughs> totally reasonable. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And then if you could watch one movie on repeat for 24 hours straight, not sure why you would do this, but, but what movie would that be? And uh, again, we'll, we'll kick it off with you, Kevin. Uh, you know, 24 hours straight is tough. Um, it'd have to be something funny, easy. I'm just going to go with Wedding Crashers. Uh, it's, it's a yeah, funny, it's, it's hilarious. It's a classic. Just roll on repeat. So, <laughs> yep. And how uh, would your people logic... describe you both? How, how would, uh, what's one word that people might use to describe Oh, wait, you? we didn't get our movie pick. Wait, wait, wait. I want to hear your movie Oh, I was going to, well, listen, I, I was actually hoping you'd skip me because mine was Dumb and Dumber. And I didn't, <laughs> want, I didn't want that getting out there. Uh, but similar line of thinking, Kevin, to you is just like something that I could sort of zone out to and just, you know, chuckle every few minutes, 24 hours is a long time to do anything. Yeah. yeah we'll, we'll, we'll edit that out. Don't, don't worry. Yeah. But um, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> What's one word people would describe you? I, I already could think of a few words that are pretty positive, but what would you say? Are we starting with Kevin or me? We'll do Kevin. Kevin? Yeah, go ahead. Got reliable, trustworthy. Nice. Uh -huh. I'm on board for that. Yeah, I like those. Those are good for him. Uh, Andy, Boy Scouts. Those? You can't say yeah. me too. Boy Scouts. There we go. <laughs> I'm not going to say me too. Uh, no. Um, so I, I would say, look, I think people think that I have high standards, which I do. I have high standards for them and myself. Uh, so maybe the word would be exacting. Mm. Mm. Awesome. Yeah. I would say entrepreneurial and innovative too. I'll take that. Okay. Absolutely. <laughs> Changing my answer. <laughs> All right. And then last, last, guy, last question before we let you guys go. I know I, we're, we're rocking, uh, rocking your time here, but uh, favorite holiday to celebrate. We're going to go with Christmas and Hanukkah. We celebrate both. Um, always good to get the family together, see friends. So. You mean it wasn't Amazon prime day? Was it, just, <laughs> it was, oh, it was my porch. favorite holiday. <laughs> and then everything's landing on the door tomorrow from everything I bought on uh, earlier this week. Right. Amazing. Uh, for me, I'm going to say uh, Halloween. So I've got a four-year-old and a three-year-old. And so seeing Halloween through their eyes, they love getting dressed up. They like staying up late. They like eating candy. Uh, and so um, that's, that's become my number one over the last uh, couple of years. I love it's that. a good one. I live near Salem, Massachusetts. So we, we know how to do <laughs> Halloween out here. Yeah, seriously. It's, uh, it's quite an event. But thank you for joining us, guys. Uh, really great chatting with you and, and seeing there's still companies like yourselves out there with doing business uh, the old school way through relationships and trust. Uh, congratulations. Yeah. yeah. Thank yeah. you very much. Yeah. It's been great thank to be you. here. And guys, if you enjoyed today's Data Movers podcast as much as we did here, Go ahead and check us out, jsa.net slash podcast for upcoming Data Movers episodes releasing every other week on Wednesday mornings, as well as, of course, our other JSA podcast series. And, uh, you know, follow and tweet at us at Evan Kerstell and Jay Scotto, and we do reply back. So thanks very much. And thank you guys again, your, your time, your insight, your love. We appreciate you. And as always, family uh, and community out there, stay safe and happy networking. <laughs>